All right, okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is James Hill. I'm the chairman of the Gas Turbine Builders Association. Uh, we're basically a small association of uh, enthusiastic model am or amateur model engineers uh, who love things that spin very fast and burn very hot. And Gas turbines. Uh, basically what we're going to do is give you a quick demonstration of a practical application for a model gas turbine. There are in fact as many applications as there are in the full size. If it's got a gas turbine in it, then we'll try to emulate it on the models. In this particular instance, it's uh, a scale model of the GT3. This is a prototype that was uh, built back in the beginning of uh, 1960, 62. Um, only one was ever built. It was run on mainline tracks, uh, tested for about 17,000 miles, uh, but never went into fair paying service, so it never ever pulled a passenger. Unlike one of its sisters, the 18100, which was actually built at the end of the 1950s, that actually was in fair paying service and did do uh, on the Great Western uh, lines. So what we've got here, the GT3, as far as we know, this is the only gas turbine scale model of that one and only prototype, original prototype. It's a reasonably unique model and it is powered by a gas turbine, a jet engine. Exactly the same jet engine as this and that is buried down inside the bodywork just down there. Now for any jet engine just to has to be started so go through the practicalities of the jet no, first before we come on to the locomotive. Basically what we've got here is a gas turbine with a single stage centrifugal compressor at the front end and a single stage axial flow turbine at the back end and there's a shaft connecting the two together so there's one rotating part, a single moving part in this engine. Also in here is a, a vaporizing combustor and we're using kerosene or paraffin as our primary fuel. Now that doesn't vaporize at ambient temperature, so what we have to do is add a bit of heat to the vaporizer during the startup, and that is achieved by actually just introducing a little bit of propane during the start cycle, and that heats up the internal workings before the kerosene goes in. So what we're doing as a usual start procedure, and you'll hear it all happen in a minute, but I'll explain it first. Like a car, you turn your key, electric motor drops in and starts turning the engine over. Same with the gas turbine. At the front end of the locomotive here, there is actually a little electric motor on with a Bendix drive. The Bendix drive will drop onto the, electric, onto the uh, rotor and just spin it over. The first thing it does is just gives it a quick spin and the RPM sensor will confirm that it's free running. Once that's confirmed, a gas valve opens, introduces gas into the combustion chamber, and a little glow plug, exactly the same as an internal combustion engine, is enough energy to ignite the gas. So when it starts, you'll hear a little whir, and then a pop as the gas ignites, and you'll start to see heat come out of the exhaust here. So a heat plume comes out of the exhaust, and you'll hear the electric motor continuing to run, continuing to accelerate the rotor, and there's a thermocouple detecting the heat rise from the gas at the back of the engine here. As soon as that temperature is, goes above 100 degrees, the fuel pump switches on and starts to slowly introduce kerosene. You'll then hear the note of the exhaust suddenly start to rise in pitch and the energy, you can hear the energy coming through the exhaust. So what the electric motor now continues to accelerate the rotor up to what is called the self-sustained speed. Self-sustained speed is basically the point at which the gas velocity out the back end is sufficient for the turbine to take energy from that gas flow to drive the compressor. That happens on this engine at about 26,000 RPM. For safety's sake, the little electric motor continues to drive this rotor up to 30,000 RPM so we have a nice safety margin before the electric motor disengages 
and then the turbine is able to drive the compressor by itself without any mechanical in external input. That will then take itself up to its idle speed, which on this engine is 45,000 RPM. Yeah, once it's hit idle, it's at a stable speed. Control will be given by the little box of tricks inside here to the driver, who will then have control of the throttle. The throttle control enables him to select any RPM between its idle speed and its full throttle. Full throttle on this engine is a fairly modest 160,000 RPM, at which point it is actually sucking in five cubic feet of air per second, heating it up in the combustion chamber. It comes into the turbine at 750 degrees centigrade and comes out the back end at about 540 meters per second. So as you can imagine, jet engine sat here in a locomotive, hot high-speed air coming out the back end, not ideal for the passengers in the, in the carriages behind. So what we have to do is turn it into something slightly more useful for the particular application. So what we actually do is introduce effectively what amounts to a, a windmill in the gas flow. It's what's called a free power turbine. And what we do is that goes in the gas flow behind the jet engine. But it doesn't go in the free flow, it actually goes in a duct pick that up. That's the same engine that is in the locomotive and that just plugs, that free power turbine plugs onto that duct so all that high velocity, high temperature air has to go through this wheel. What that does is takes all the heat and velocity and converts it into shaft power. Once we've converted into shaft power we can then do what we want with it. First, in the first instance, what happened, a gearbox on the front end, there's an example of the gearbox on this locomotive here, and a propeller, and this is actually just the original prototype which was built back in about 1998. And this was uh, exactly the same design, but that was the very first prototype. So this wheel, through a gearbox, five to one reduction ratio, turned this jet into a turboprop. This as a jet engine, will produce about 14 pounds of thrust, just as it is, 14 pounds. It weighs about one and a half pounds. In the turboprop here, because we've converted all that otherwise hot, high velocity gas that we were throwing into the air by that engine, by converting it through the free power turbine, putting it on a propeller, we've now got 50 pounds of static thrust, five zero. So we've taken all that energy and we're now using it much more economically, much more usefully. So what we've got here is exactly that arrangement of engine, gas turbine, free power turbine, and initial gearbox here from a turboprop. So there's a, we've taken the prop off and attached the re remainder of the gears on this locomotive. So it goes through these belt drives, through some bevel gears, which enable us to have forward and reverse gear then a chain drive and a final belt to the driving wheels. So this wheel here is actually directly connected to the rails, the wheel on the rails. And although this can go up to 160,000 RPM, because we've gone through that diffuse, that big duct, that diffusing duct, this never goes above 50,000 RPM. We've reduced the velocity, increased the pressure to get max torque out of this wheel. So 100 to 1 down to the wheels means actually even at this, uh, at this sort of uh, ratio, we've still actually got a potential, this locomotive, if it was ever wound up to full speed on a nice straight even track, could probably do approximately 40 miles an hour. Direct drive. So what we've actually got here, just to give you some idea of the power that, you know, that what was turning into thrust on that engine, in terms of shaft power here, if you were to put a standard steam plant on this five inch gauge chassis, 
you would get normally about 0.75 of a brake horsepower to the wheels. This will give seven and a half brake horsepower to the wheels. So we've got 10 times the power of a standard steam plant on this locomotive. Now that was actually the problem that the original had, and this is why it only went within uh, testing and never went in service, because a jet engine, to be fuel efficient, always has to work at it, what is called its design speed, which is usually max power, max RPM. And because we're directly coupled, that means it has to be going like the clappers permanently. When it comes down to idle, so the driver is always throttling up, throttling down, one of these engines is nearly as thirsty sitting at idle as it is at full power. So it's just wasting fuel, stopping at signals, stopping at lights, and it was just chewing up fuel, and they couldn't make it economic, which is why the turbo electric actually was good, because you could actually make better use of that energy by putting the generators in the middle of the system. Uh, so yeah, so it never went into service, a lot of testing. But anyway, let, let's um, show you exactly what all that sounds like. Want to turn that for me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Health and safety says. <laughs> yes, definitely. Are we ready? Ready. Switch that one down for me. Great, I'll do the rest. Well done. Here we go. Gas is starting.